All right, so we have our application image here, our shipping Docker app image, and we saw that we could run it, but of course we don't have a database here, we don't have Redis, we don't have any other technology to use with our application that we're probably gonna need. So what I'm gonna do in this video is just show you how to use Docker networks and to use that to connect two containers, two or more, so that they can communicate with each other. So a new command here is gonna be docker network and we can do the ls command to list out networks here. And these three are just the default networks you get out of the box with docker. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a new network and I'm gonna put two or more containers into it and I'll show you how they can communicate with each other. So let's do docker network dash h for help and we're gonna do the create command and create dash h and we have a bunch of options but we don't really need to worry about them because we're gonna use the default options. All we need to do is give the network a name. So I'm gonna do docker network create. I'm just gonna use the network type bridge and bridge is the default and all it does is make a network that local containers can use to communicate with each other. Local meaning they're on this one computer. So I'm just gonna call this appnet just to give it a quick name and we'll do docker network ls. We see that appnet exists, it's type bridge, scope is therefore local. Okay, so now what? I only have one container here to link to each other, right? So what I'm gonna do is grab a MySQL container and we'll hook up our application container to the MySQL container so that they can communicate with each other. So let's head over to Docker Hub and I'm gonna go straight to the MySQL official page and we'll check out what they have here. And we're gonna use MySQL 5.7 and what I wanna do here is just check out some documentation of how to run it because they have specific things they want you to set. For example, some environment variables. So what happens with the MySQL container is the first time you spin it up, it uses environment variables to create a root password, to create a database out of the box, and any additional users you might want to use. So what I'm going to do here is just do docker run. I'm going to push it into the background, remove it when we stop running it. I'm going to give it a name. This is a bit new. I'm going to name it just MySQL, and we'll see what that does for us. And then we can set our environment variables with the dash E flag. So I'm just going to give the root user a password of root also. I'm going to tell it to create a database of the name Homestead, which is going to be Laravel's default. We're going to create an additional MySQL user called Homestead as well. And that user will have a MySQL password of secret. And these are all defaults to my to Laravel. We're going to grab MySQL of tag 5.7. I don't care about the um, minor version here. Just grab the 5.7 one, which is one of the tags available up here. 5.7 generically. And actually before that, I'm gonna do dash dash network. We're gonna tell it to join the network that we created called AppNet. So this MySQL container will be inside of AppNet. And I think that's it. I'm gonna let it do its default thing that it does when it spins up. I'm not gonna define a command. And of course it has to download that image because I don't have it on my local computer yet. Great, okay, so Docker PS, that is up and running. Docker image LS, we have our uh, MySQL 5.7 container. Docker network LS. We have our network appnet, and I'm gonna do docker network inspect. We're gonna inspect the appnet network, and we'll see we have a container inside of it, and it's named MySQL. So we have our MySQL container inside of our appnet network. Okay, so I just wanna hammer home one idea here. That is that we give our MySQL container a name, right? That name is MySQL. Now that name is reused when you add a container into a network, and it's given that name as well. So MySQL is actually the host name that will resolve to the IP address of the container named MySQL. So I'm going to do docker exec-it, and I'm going to run bash inside of our container that is currently running that is named MySQL. And we are in here, and I don't think it has the ps command, so I can't explicitly see what commands are being run, but we know that MySQL server is up and running. So if I do which MySQL D, MySQL D is actually what's running, that's MySQL server. I also have the MySQL client here, which I can run as well. So I can do MySQL client dash H, I can do localhost, because I'm actually running MySQL inside of the container that is already running MySQL. I also could do the, my, the host of MySQL um, which will resolve to the IP address of this container. And we can see that. So I'll do get end hosts and MySQL. This will resolve the host name MySQL. And we see that that's the IP address 1802, which is the IP address of the container that we are actually inside of right now. So I can try that out. And let's make sure my root password worked. And it did, great. And I also had a user named Homestead and the password was secret, and that lets me get in as well. And if I do show databases, we can see that Homestead is indeed there. So the database is up and running and all set. 
So I only have the MySQL container running right now. Let's run another container and that'll be my application container. So I'm gonna name it app, which means it'll just have a name of app, but also if I, another container needs to talk to my application container, it can via hostname app if the containers communicating with each other are all within the same network. And we are, so we're gonna add this container also into the network appnet. I'm gonna run it to the background. I'm gonna remove it when we finish running the container. I'm gonna to bind to port 80 here in this case on my Mac, port forward that into port 80 into the container, share the same directories, and that should be it. Okay, perfect, so that's running Docker PS. We see them both running. I'm gonna do Docker exec once again. I'm gonna run bash inside of our currently running container that is named app. So get int hosts app. This is the IP address of that container. We can see it just got incremented by one. The MySQL container was 02, and this is 03. And more importantly, I'm in the application container and it can see the host name for the MySQL container. Perfect. I'll exit this and do Docker network inspect appnet. And we can see now inside of appnet, we have the app container at hostname app and the MySQL container at hostname MySQL and they both have IP addresses assigned, private network IP addresses assigned to them. So in the next video, we'll spin up a Laravel application and see how we can get these two containers speaking to each other.